Sausage party without saying it's a sausage party. Okay, we'll get a picture of that one. <laughs>
and uh, hold. Okay. Yeah, but get your one finger like one finger holding the rest of the clip behind the thing. There you go. Yeah. yeah. Oh, it's on me. Well, this is the cook portion of the catch and cook. As you've seen, I got out fishing with uh, Blake and some of his friends and family members, and we had a pretty good time. That was at uh, Wawanisa. Uh, walleye were biting pretty good. I think it's slowed down now, but uh, let's get into the cooking part. So I'm gonna go through uh, a couple recipes, maybe a couple procedures that I like to go through, just to kind of get things started. And if this goes well, and this is something you you guys like and maybe want to see a bit more of uh it's something i can do more of uh this is kind of what i do for a living i'm not the best at it i'm no josh mcfadden but um i do okay in the kitchen so if you can learn a couple things hey i'm glad i helped so a uh, couple things we're going to go through are some basic simple breading procedures if you've never breaded any fish or anything before just something to give it a little extra crunch um uh, a little extra flavor added to it. Uh, some of the other recipes are just uh, walleye's got a great flavor already on, on its own so uh, a lot of the recipes and procedures are just to kind of uh, help the flavor of the walleye. Uh, keep it fairly simple. Uh, not, not to overwhelm the walleye itself by, by any means but uh, just to add to it. So the walleye I had a while ago and it isn't completely fresh as far as filleting it you know uh, there's lots of videos online what I did was I just zippered it to take out the pin bones that were inside here so there's they're boneless fillets and that's what we'll be uh, working with so first thing is you want to make sure your station is clean your hands are clean and all that stuff and then there's no transfer any sort of bacterial thing 
to go on. Um, I think the first thing, some of the tools that you might need, this is a microplane here. It's uh, for grabbing the zest off of lemons. So that's one thing. One of the recipes I'll go through is a uh, lemon garlic uh, topping. And then uh, we'll do some other ones. But for the first one, I think what I'm actually gonna do is some breading stuff. So the first one, we're gonna do some basic breading. We're gonna do a base of pepper with salt and vinegar chips. So what we're gonna do first is gonna open up this bad boy. We're gonna get our base layer prepared. So I'm gonna use a electric fruit processor. I'm gonna throw some chips in there and get them into a powder consistency. Oopsies. Pringles would work maybe a little bit better with this, just the way Pringles, Pringles are constructed. But these will work really well too. Plus, I kind of like the flavors of the Old Dutch. A little more than the Pringles. Okay. This will be a little loud. That's pretty close. Not quite powder, because like I said, Pringles will be better for that. But as you can see, we're quite down there. So you'll want to put these in, depending on how fine you can get them. These might be okay for the top layer, but typically when you're frying, you want your uh, flavorings to be uh, a little bit um, closer to the base layer and the reason for that is the salt when you're frying the salt is uh, what will make your oil that you're frying in uh, last less long so simple breading uh, you'll start with a dust which we'll do with the flour and then I might put uh, just a little bit of uh, salt and pepper and flour here and then you'll do an egg wash, and then you'll do your final topping. Uh, I prefer to instead of a bowl for your egg wash and for your dusting, just because I find with the fish being flat already, it's just easier to get a more even coating. So egg wash is simple. It's just egg and a little bit of milk that helps uh, everything bind. I'm just using creamer for richness. Just mix them up a little bit. Okay, that's all mixed, well integrated. So for the base layer, because we're using salt and vinegar, I might just bypass the salt for the base layer with the flour. Because so I'm gonna use the uh, salt and vinegar chips on the outside with panko crumbs as the final final crusting but it already has enough salt in it so just gonna add a little bit of fresh ground pepper just a little bit of onion powder in there as well so now we'll mix that up as well just get all the ingredients in there So I'm just using some panko crumbs, just Japanese bread crumbs. And then I'm gonna add our crushed up potato chips to that. And that'll be our final crusting. Okay. 
So this setup here is a simple breading procedure. First you'll dust, then you'll egg wash, then you'll do your top crumb, and then you can fry. So the reason why I chose a flat piece or a flat dish is just so it's easier to get your breading done. So that you got your base coat, your egg wash, let that dry off well. There we go. And then your crumb. You can use pre-done coatings. It's fine. I just find this is uh, classic. Now with the nature of the fish here, with the salt and the vinegar, it's a very classic uh, flavor for fish. Vinegar, salt, and then we'll pan fry that one in some butter. Hello Jasper. Yes, we have cats. That's why you want to make sure you're washing your workstation. No cat hair. Okay. I'll just a little shake there. Okay. For me personally, this is how you would do any coating. This just gives a little crispiness to the fish, even more so than just uh, an apply coating and cook. Now, as far as oil, fat that you want to fry in, um, doing a pan sear and, you know, like butter is perfectly fine. You can use olive oil if you want to add just a little more flavor. Um, if you want to go really fast and really hot, you can use grapeseed oil, or if you want to, I just normally use vegetable oil or canola oil. It's got low flavor um, and it does the job. Uh, the smoke point for canola oil is actually fairly low. So if you're not gonna go too hot, use a candy thermometer. I usually like to cook the fish around 350 degrees Fahrenheit when I'm deep frying, but uh, we're not really frying, deep frying this time. We're just gonna do a pan sear, so. So for this next one, you can think of it as a chimichurri topping. It's not quite a full authentic chimichurri, but this is a lemon garlic chimichurri. I'm gonna put on top of the walleye and bake it. So I've got my garden fresh chives. I've got lemon for lemon zest. I'm gonna use some pre-chopped garlic in oil and that oil is going to be used. Then I'm going to use some salt, some fresh ground pepper, and some curry powder. So when you're cutting your herbs, you want to make sure your knife's good and sharp. Chives are a great way to add some color and get a little bit of onion flavor. And you don't want some super, super strong onion flavor. Okay. So we'll grab our micro plane. And we'll get some zest off of the lemon. The zest, using the zest is a great way to add lemon flavor without getting, you know, acid. Because there's lots of great oils inside of the zest. Which is why you would use the zest of any of the citrus. Zest is great and not just... Uh, savory cooking but it's also good in baking as well. Using a microplane is a little bit better than uh, using a cheese grater simply because you can get less of the uh, rind in with your uh, zest. So now I'm gonna mix it all into a bowl. We're gonna add that zest, the chives, Get it all in there. 
Okay. Then we're going to add just a little bit of curry powder. Curry powder will add some nice color, a little nice flavor as well. So as you can see, we have some juices in the bottom there. As far as baking goes, I'm gonna go a little bit lower and slower. I'm probably gonna bake at, oh, let's say I'm gonna bake it at about uh, 290. Okay, so barbecue method. It will require aluminum foil. And then for this particular one, I'm gonna use dill, salt, pepper, onion, and butter. So I'm gonna give you a tip for cutting some onion. I'm gonna cut off the unwanted parts, the top and the bottom. Then I'm gonna slice one of the outer layers off. And then just peel that guy off. To get to the onion that I want to use. So for this particular recipe I'm just using some white onion. So the tip is I'm just going to slice here a little piece off the face and then I'm going to flip the onion up here and I'm just going to help me to stop it from rocking. And then I want to make slices straight down this way to get some rings. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to take my knife which is quite sharp and I'm just going to saw back and forth, making sure that I'm keeping my knife straight down. This isn't a race. We're not trying to get a thousand things done at once here. We can take our time and do a good job, get everything nice and even. That'll be enough onion. Okay, so now that we have enough here, I'm just gonna separate these into individual rings. So I'm going to set that aside and I'm going to make my barbecue trays. So the aluminum foil, I'm going to pull some out. And then I'm going to double it up. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold each end, each edge. So do it this way. Not too much, just a little bit. So 
now I'm going to lift each flap over. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to join those two creases, fold over. So there's a tray, all set up, ready to go. It's nice and light, it's cost effective. It's uh, disposable, I guess would be the best way to describe it. So what I'm gonna take now that I got my tray, I'm gonna take some onions and I'm gonna throw it on the bottom. Okay, so here I have fresh dill. I don't have any growing in the garden this year. Doing something a little different. So what I'm gonna do with the fresh dill, it's been pre-washed, is I am going to take a couple of sprigs and just throw it right on the bottom as well with the onion. Okay, the, uh, I'm gonna cut up a bunch of the other dill. Maybe not a bunch, just a little bit. This is to go on top of the fish as we're, ba as we're uh, barbecuing it. That will actually probably be enough right there. I just love the smell of fresh dill. Okay. There we go. So I'm just gonna take the butter, cut a couple slabs, I guess you would call it, then place them on the tray. Just like that. Then the fish will go directly on top of all of that. <laughs> 